I'll let that go. <laughs> Turn your Bibles tonight to Matthew chapter 27, please. Matthew chapter 27. Man. We go to verse 62. Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came together and the pilot saying, Sir, remember that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. We open up in a word of prayer, please. Thank you, God, for giving me a chance to preach here tonight. Just uh, please speak through me, God, and uh, bless the sermon uh, in your name. Amen. Amen. All right, so I want to give you a little background about this story. This is talking about, the Pharisees were talking here, and they're talking about this is after Jesus Christ was crucified, and Jesus promised, you know, by the scripture, that he would rise again the third day, Amen. right? And the Pharisees right here were, were coming together because they wanted to, you know, put a watch on him to show that he wasn't going to... Uh, rise again, and they call him that deceiver. That is your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They call him that deceiver. Or deceiver. And I want to show you something that the Baptists of America are calling Jesus Christ the deceiver uh -huh. nowadays, alright? Turn, to, Go over to Matthew 28, 2 through 6, and it says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and came and rolled back the stone from the door, and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, his rain was like white as snow, and for fear of him the keepers did shake and become a dead man. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know what you seek, Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he's risen. As he said. Let me tell you something. Anything that Jesus Christ says or God says, it's always going to be as he said. Man, Every man. time. All right? We're going like many different topics about what he said, but I want to keep it on one topic tonight. That the Baptists, you know, of America, and this is a problem, that they believe, you know, Jesus Christ is a deceiver. I want you to turn to Psalm 119, please. Now, if you know your Bible, the Psalm 119 is about the Word of God, you know. So, I want to show you something tonight. Why the Baptists of America, you know, the independent fundamental Baptists, we could call out the Presbyterians and everybody like that, or calling Jesus a deceiver. But, you know, we're going to call out the independent Fulmer Baptist here tonight because this is Faith Ward Baptist Church, and that's what we do here. So, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Psalm 119, verse 160. It says in the Bible, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgment endureth forever. I hate to tell you, but thy word is true. The King James Bible is true Amen. because Amen. God Amen. said so, all right? right. It's not because I made it up. It's not because Stucky told me or something like that. It's because God <laughs> said so, all right? Amen. And the independent Amen. fellow Baptist will tell you this Bible is not true. They're calling God a deceiver, yeah. all right? That's right. what they're doing. They're no better than the Pharisees telling you that God's a deceiver, all right? And I want to take you to another point to show you where they're calling God a deceiver. I want to call this out. They need to be called out on this. Turn to Psalms chapter 12, please. These Baptists are no better than the Pharisees calling Jesus Christ deceiver. And I think it's ridiculous. And it's hurting the, the word, the Baptists, you know. Because I'm proud to be a Baptist. I don't know about you guys. Amen. 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 But it says in Psalm chapter 12, verse 6, it says, The words of the Lord are pure words, the silver tribe and the furnace of earth purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. What did God say here? He said he would preserve them. I'm sick and tired of hearing the man that translated the Bible and kept the word of God. God said it. He did it. It's always as he said. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He's not a deceiver. I mean, Jesus Christ said that he would keep his word. What do you think he did? Do you believe in God? I mean, you believe that salvation is by grace through faith, but you won't believe the Bible is perfect. This is what he said. It's always as he said. It's never any other Amen. different. Amen. No. And uh, just turn your Bible to 2 Timothy chapter 3, please. I want to prove one more point. I didn't know people thought this, but Stucky liked me on this one day. I, know, I did not know Baptists really believe this. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, please. Verse 16. It says, All scripture of God is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof and correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I have heard now that the Bible is, may be preserved, but it's not inspired by God. I hate to tell you something, but God inspired the Bible. Amen, man. It says right here, you know, it's as he said, all scriptures given by inspiration of God. If you don't believe that, why do you believe salvation by grace through faith? Amen. If you don't believe that, you know, why do you believe anything else in the Bible? I don't understand. Amen. Why do you pick and choose what you believe? Are you, uh, are you scared of what the Bible says? Because the Bible says the faggots are going to hell. 
I'm sorry, but that's what the Bible says. It says Amen. all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Amen. The Baptists of America are deceivers because they will not stand up to what the Word of God says. Amen. And I'm sick and tired of hearing it because it's hurting. It's hurting like people getting saved. You know, people don't believe the Bible anymore because yeah. the Baptists want to stand up for it. Right. So go to 1 Peter chapter 1 and 23, please. If we didn't have the Word of God, we'd be in trouble. And I'm going to show you that right now. This fires me up more than anything in the world. I'm so sick of sitting inside, sick inside of an independent from our Baptist church, hearing that, you know, the Bible's not perfect. And I hate going back to the Greek. It's ridiculous. Amen. It says right here in 1 Peter chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 23, it says, Being born again, not of corruptible, but of incorruptible by the Word of God. This is the incorruptible seed right here. If this Amen. wasn't incorruptible, you could not get saved. Amen. I hate to tell you that. Because it's as he said. It's always as Jesus Christ said. Just like Garrett said, you know, it's as he said. He promises us things. He promised us he'd keep the Bible perfect. If the Bible's not perfect, he's a liar. Mark it right now. If the Bible's Amen. not perfect, he's a liar. If he didn't inspire, he's a liar. You know, but these Baptists are going around saying that he couldn't keep his word. It was lost in translation. Or something like that. Let me tell you something. Anybody that says that, they're no better than the Pharisees and the hypocrites. It says, woe unto you. You'll see receive the greater damnation. Yep. Maybe some of them are saved. But I'll tell you what happened. Probably these lordship morons that Amen. believe something out. <laughs> Let them be a curse. Mark them avoid them. Yep. You know, I don't care anymore. This is the Bible. I'm not ashamed. I believe Amen. Philippians 1.20 says, you know, according to this, help me, I'm not ashamed of the Bible. Amen. This Amen. is what it says. Amen. I'm going to believe it. Amen. Oh, let's pray. Good. It's good. Dear God, thank you for giving us a chance to preach here tonight. Thank God for waking faith for the Baptist Church. Thanks for standing on the King James Bible. Praise in your precious name. Amen.